Hey there, back here in the evening now. Um, when I was last born, this uh, piece of steel here, that is uh, kind of a tough uh, piece of metal and something that um, I have actually run into quite often. Um, there's two pieces of uh, 4140 welded together or that type of metal and one of them is a pre-hard. So a born uh, a, a piece of softer metal then born into a, a harder piece. So my object uh, on that part there is just to get a reasonable bore on it so I can uh, push a bronze bushing. Now what happened, I, it chattered and all that stuff. So, and that's normal, you run into that, that kind of thing. So I got the tool out of the head here and it's dull. See, it got dull. It's just, it scratches, but it's not shaving the finger now. So when it gets like that, and I can feel that it's rough, so it's got a microchip on it. And so I'm going to put it in the cutter grinder, which is set up right here, and I'll do that. And um, I'll see if I can do that in this video. But I'm going to talk about some of the other things uh, people have asked me about with the machine. And uh, I've got the spindle head all the way up. And I found a, a cheap tape measure. And it is to the table on this number two jig board. To the table it is 21 inches. So that's the daylight this machine has. And I have seen a factory rises on, on one of these uh, um, at one time. And the number one machine, which is quite a bit uh, smaller, they put risers on those uh, quite often. Okay, now another uh, tool I want to show. I might uh, lower this a little, just a little bit. I think that might be better. And I'll pull it up. I'll pull it down with its box. I don't know if I displayed this thing before or not, but this is the scope for a more jig bore. It's an older one. It's a Perkins Elmar. And this is a very nice attachment to have. And uh, it uh, is very expensive. The, the later ones um, were a little bit fancier. Um, uh, I, and I'm not sure what power uh, the newer ones are, uh, but this one here appears to be 60 power. And this is an adapter here for the more jig grinder. Okay. Now, one of the objects of the, uh, of the spindle on this machine, see, so see, I've got a more sticker on it. it when you put this in the spindle, it goes in exact every time. And you can calibrate it, you know. It's like uh, adjusting a rifle scope. And it's got a grid in it. And I think I'll be able to photograph it. And you can measure with the grid various angles and distances and things like that. But uh, with the power of this and care using it, it's accurate and setting plus or minus one ten thousandth of an inch on a machine. Now, if you think about it, it has to go back into the spindle exactly to do that. And that's why you only see these things with jig bores. You know, they... They were the rage for a long time, but you'll find it not practical for uh, machines that they're not designed for. They won't. <laughs> it, I can explain that a little bit at, a, at another time. But uh, if, if, uh, if it's not made for the machine, you can calibrate it, but uh, it'll only be good for one use. If you remove it from the spindle, it's, uh, it needs to be recalibrated. But this doesn't. Now, one of the other things you can do with the machine, and this is a great aid, is measure with it. Okay. Okay. Right on the thumb. Put it down here. Now, I got a uh, spindle uh, tapers here. 
Okay. Here they are here. Now here's a standard more solid collet. And these are really exact. And uh, I forgot the last price on these, but they were very expensive. This is a 3 8 has a 3 8 end metal in it. And I just have a basic set. Now, what I did for my own uses is uh, right here. Now, since I have the fabulous Monarch 10 E lathe, to go with that machine, I can make my own shanks, okay? Cut the square thread and fit them to the spindle. Now, every more jig bore, you're supposed to keep the tooling with that machine. It's in the manual. And it tells you if you get a new piece of tooling to lap it so it fits the spindle. And I can demonstrate how to do that. It's not that hard to do. You do it in a lathe. And uh, I, I use a piece of lead. And, you know, probably takes about a half hour to fit a new shank to, to the spindle. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I'll point this out if I can find it. It should be right here. Yeah. Now, as far as I know... <laughs> is um, this is the only shank commercially available. And it's made by Criterion. And, and it's got the 7 8 by 20 uh, boring head thread on it. And I, I can't remember the last price on this shank here, but it was under 200 bucks. Okay, so, <laughs> and what I found with these, with my particular machine, I probably bought three or four of these, um, is uh, that they fit, they fit my spindle, and I can't remember having to lap one in. You know, they just fit good. So, I don't know. That's, uh, I... It, as far as I know, that's still available, like uh, in MSC uh, catalog, uh, in the Criterion <laughs> Boring Head Shanks. Okay, I'll set that over here. Now, all right. Now, w with the machine, and I was talking about high shear cutters, and they just don't last very long. And I had a, a Ramecron uh, boring head system I, I got a great deal on, and I used it for quite a while until I ran out of inserts and uh, discovered how much they cost, and I immediately sold that to somebody else, and then went back to uh, making my own cutters and grinding them on the, on the cutter grinder here. It's just more economical. Uh, for me, you know, doing repairs and stuff. So uh, I'm going to put the uh, uh, boring bar in the uh, cutter grinder and grind it because that's part of the process here. Okay, here we go. Okay. Get you looking at the cutter grinder. Okay. Now, you know, this, the setup here is extremely simple. You know, it's pre-set up. I just stick the tool in there. Get it pretty much level, snug it in, make sure everything's tight. I gotta crank it back now. Knock, knock stuff off the wall. Okay. We're very close there. Okay, fire it up. Now, generally, when they get dull, I grind them back five thousandths, and that does it. But I'll give it the fingernail test, okay? Here we go. Okay. I took a pretty big bite there, so I'm going to take a small bite. 
pull it out. I'm just going to bust that back. Because I think I got it that first time. Oh yeah. Let's see. Okay. Now we're looking. I'm going to take one more shot. And hold it here. Okay. Usually I have a fan blowing air on this side. It kind of takes the dust out a little bit better. I'm not smelling it now. But you don't want to smell that dust. It, it's poison. It's just bad stuff. Oh, that thing's so sharp. That's terribly sharp. That's dangerously sharp. <laughs> we'll get over here and look at it. Okay. Well, almost knocked you over there. Okay, here's the boron tool here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna lap it and get that radius back on there, see? Just like that. Get it all nice and smooth. Go over the top and get that all polished. Okay, I'm gonna come back and we'll use it again. Okay.